Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel and welcome to a really quick, hopefully simple, stitching tutorial. Now, I know it's really hard to see on camera when somebody does stitching with some embroidery floss and the holes are super small. So I'm gonna show you how to do it using a piece of paper and two different kinds, well, two different pieces of yarn because we're gonna do a back stitch and a chain stitch. So this is gonna be our stitch file or our cut file or the holes that you poke for whatever you're going to stitch. I'm going to use a large hole because I want to, you guys to be able to see exactly how to do this. So I'm just using obviously a regular standard size hole punch. Now, normally you would have a needle on the end and um, you would be working with a needle and embroidery floss or something to that effect. But because I want you to be able to see it without having to be super close to the camera, um, I'm going to show you this way. So I'm going to use one piece for a back stitch. At least that's what I believe it's called. And um, if you're doing it just like with a, if you're using something like a um, piercing tool, you can just tie a knot in your thread or you can use a piece of um, washi tape to hold it in place. You would do your piercing with a piercer. Um, I'm looking to see if I have mine handy. Should have thought of that before I started this video. Okay, so here's a piercer that I use. It's just from Amy Tangerine. But you know what works great is a thumbtack. The kind that has like the red, blue, and yellow end on it, like the big end, not like the flat white ones that when you poke it into the wall, it's kind of flat against the wall. But the other kind, they work great also. Um, so if you don't have a piercing tool, that could be something that you try. It's a little harder to hold, but it's not bad. So I'm just going to tape this down. This is the back side and then this is the front side. So I'm going to go ahead and do a back stitch, which is pretty easy. So there's a couple of ways to do it. You can come up through the first hole and then your knot would be on the reverse side or it's taped like mine is. And then you come down through the next hole. So there's your first stitch. Now I'm going to come up through the next hole and I want to complete the stitch here. I don't want to just go to the next one because then it looks like you're skipping. So now I'm going to go down this hole. Okay. And now I'm going to come all the way across instead of coming up um, the hole that I just, this hole here, I'm going to come up the next hole. So I'm skipping. I'm down in this hole, skipping a hole, coming up. And now I'm going to go back down the hole that I just did. And that's why it's called a back stitch because you're going backwards. Okay. Same thing. I'm going to come up. And then I'm going to go right back down the hole I was just in. So that it completes the stitch. Now I know that looks kind of funny because the holes are huge, but just this is just for demonstration purposes. So up and then down. I, on the back side, I'm coming across two. I'm going to put it down and I'm going to come up the side that I, the, the hole that I skipped. So it looks the exact same. Okay. So that's basically how you do a back stitch. Okay. Now I did mention there's a couple of ways to do it and I'm going to show you how I, a, another way to start it on this, um, one but then I'm going to actually do a um, oh boy, this washi tape's really old. <laughs> and then I'm going to do a um, chain stitch. Okay, so the other way to start it is same way. I'm going to tape it on the back side. And so in that first one, we came up the first hole and we went down the next hole, creating that loop. You can also just come up the second hole and go down the first hole. So you're starting just like you would continue. Um, so you're coming up and then you're going down the hole right before. So you're like skipping a hole and coming up and then going down the, the hole that you skipped. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. 
and you can watch that over again if you need to. Um, okay, so this is how we do a chain stitch. Again, I'm taped to the back or you can knot it whichever way you want. You're gonna come up the first hole. Okay, you wanna pull it all the way through and then I'm gonna hold it here because I don't want it to uh, go down the same hole, but I'm going to I'm going to make it go down the same hole, but I don't want the whole thing to fall out. So I don't want to pull it all the way through. So this is the chain. So I've, I've put it right back down the same hole. So up one, up one, up the hole and down the same hole, keeping the loop. And now I'm going to come up the next hole right in between the loop. So that is what makes the chain. Okay. So now that I've gone up that hole, I'm going to hold it again and I'm going to go back down the hole, but on the other side of the thread. So one is in between the two, uh, the, the loop and when this one is on the outside of the loop and it's going to create its own loop. Okay. Now you don't have to put it over the hole. You can, you can, um, come up this hole and then stick it under if that's easier for you. Usually it's easier if you just make your loop so that your needle goes right up in the middle. And you want to kind of pull it not super tight. You don't want to pull it back this way because then your your chain looks kind of funky. Um, you want your chain to end where your your hole is. Let's see now it even looks even more funky. <laughs> so I'm going to loosen that up. I'm going to make my loop a little bigger. And what I've done here is I've now tightened up the, the front one. So you don't want to tighten it too much. I'm going to pull that out because it, it's way too tight. Okay. And that was just for demonstration purposes. I purposely pulled it tight so you could see kind of how it looks. Okay. So I want my loop to be ended at the hole. I don't want to pull it backwards. Okay. So now I've got this loop because I've come up and now I'm back down the hole. Now I'm going to come up in between the loop and go back down. It looks a little funny, but it will all work out. It's probably looking funny because of how I pulled it. So we're going to just go right back here and you, it's really kind of not easy to undo it when you're doing it with a needle and embossing or um, embroidery floss. <laughs> okay, so I've come up the hole, I'm holding my loop, coming down the hole, I get the end of it, it's kind of springy. Okay, I'm going up the hole, coming all the way through, pulling it straight up and down, making my loop. So my loop is here, holding it with my thumb, I'm going to stick this piece right on down. There's my loop. I'm going to come right back up that and I'm going to pull it all the way through. Now you notice I didn't pull this one super tight. I'm going to pull it when I get up here. Okay. Holding my loop again, going back down the hole and it does get caught over here frequently. So, um, sometimes, you know, if you have to hold it sideways or whatever, or just undo it, off the corner or whatever your piece is that you're working on. So back up the hole, pulling it straight up and down, not pulling it backwards because that's going to make your loops all funky. I'm holding on to it, going back down the hole. Now you see I didn't go all the way around the hole, totally fine. I can find that when I get it through here. It's not a big deal. Okay, pulling it straight up and down, going back down the hole up the next hole and through the loop. That's how we make the chain stitch. And I'm gonna go nice and tight. So there we have our chain and our back stitch. Hopefully that was helpful to you. So for 31 days of cut files, uh, MK chose one's uh, stitching files for the first week. The first few are rather simple and don't require a ton of stitch stitching. Um, but as you get further into the, I, th I think it's actually five days. It's not actually a full week. It, when you get down to the fifth one, there's quite a bit of stitching. 
Um, so hopefully you can work your way up to that. And usually I just do the back stitch. I don't normally do a chain stitch every once in a while. I feel like a chain stitch uh, is going to look really nice. It does take a little bit longer. It takes more thread. Um, so if you're limited on what you have on hand, stick with your back stitch. Uh, but it looks really nice and I think it stands out nicely on your page. So hopefully that made sense to everyone. If you have questions or comments, you can always leave those down below and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. I hope that you guys enjoy 31 days of cut files. If you don't know what that is, it is something that we are doing on our channels. Um, people have purchased a kit of pre-cut cut files. It is possible to also purchase the digital files, uh, but you have to source some of those your, on your own. But um, it is going on on both of our channels and we do have some live things going on as well over in the 31 Days of Cut Files group. So you can check that out on Facebook. I'll put a link down below in case you're interested in that. Um, otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope that this stitching tutorial was helpful for you. And if it was, I would love a thumbs up down below. And if you want to see what's coming up and you're not already subscribed uh, and you want to know more about using cut files, hit that subscribe button because you're going to get a whole bunch of inspiration all month long. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.